Hi, good morning. My name is Lisa. This is my dad, Roy. What's up? Welcome to King Roll Fi. Today we're talking about how the Lord has given us power and control over our future. So if you are in life where you don't want to be, there is something you can do about it. Glory to God. So go ahead, Dad, get started. Yeah, Lisa just said we have control over our future. And we're going to talk about that today. And I know this topic is uh, somewhat controversial mm -hmm. with many people. But if we listen with an open mind and heart, we will hear the spiritual truth that documents its authenticity. Yes, that's now, right. Now, we're going to start off with the uh, with the the master verse from the Bible for KingWorldwide.com, and here it is. Matthew six thirty three. We're taking it from the New Living Translation. Seek first the ki seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. So the kingdom of God is not a place. It's a government. It's a covenant. It's a system. Right. That has jurisdiction over all its members or citizens. So when we are born again, we become citizens of the kingdom of God, just like we are citizens of our respective country, whether the United States or Italy or France or Spain or right. Australia or, or wherever. And uh, so we're citizens, and the system basically outlines as far as what we can do and not do. Okay, now, the second, we've got a number of scriptures today, and the second one uh, is from Corinthians, so let's roll. This is from the Bere Berean Literal Bible. But thanks be to God, the one always leading us in triumph in Christ. It's 2 Corinthians 2.14. But thanks be to God, the one always leading us in triumph in Christ. And through us, in every place, making manifest the fragrance of the knowledge of him. So, so here, here we're saying, uh, what the word is saying, that God has promised us victory in every situation we encounter. Every. Now, you might say, well, I've got all kind of situations that that I encounter in life, and I haven't been victorious in all of them, that's not God's fault. That, that's our fault, and we'll prove that today. Now, here, here's uh, another scripture verse from uh, uh, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 6, 17, from the New Living Translation. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Our enjoyment. Not our love, but our enjoyment. Okay? Now, I'm going to summarize these, these four. Now, here, here's the, uh, the next one of this first four scriptures. It's in 2 Peter, one of my favorites. 2 Peter 1, 3. Mm -hmm. This is from the King James. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. I think the key part of that, you know, everybody's going to focus, which I did for a long time, on that he's provided everything uh, for our life and godliness. Mm -hmm. But the, I think the key power, the key point of that is that at, right past that, it says through the knowledge of him. And that's fellowship with him, that's spending time with Jesus. In his and word. In his word. I mean, and just communicating and talking like Lisa and I do. Uh, she does, and our director. She does, most, she does most of the talking, and I, I do most of the listening. Now, um, so. Okay. But in this particular verse, remember, when Lisa read it, she used the term like half or H -A -T -H. has. H-A-T-H. Past tense. It's past tense. And also, it's before the foundation of the world. So right. this was done a long time ago, already set up for us. And then there's some kind of bumps right. upon the road, as we'll touch on here. But it was all set up for us, everything for life and godliness. Right. Now, so the yeah. first one, Matthew 6.33, government or system, we are a citizen of it. 2 Corinthians 2.14 is that God has already promised us victory. He's already promised us victory. Right. And then 1 Timothy 6, 17, he gives us all things richly to enjoy. And then in 2 Peter 1, 3, is that he's given us everything for life and godliness. Right. And in my review this morning, what popped up in my mind was 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, 
and it says, In all things give thanks, for that is the will of God for all of us in Christ Jesus for us, concerning us. That's so the will God. of God in Christ Jesus for all of us. In all things give thanks. In all well, things. And, and you might say, well, and I did for, for a long time in the past, is that, well, I'm not sure I'm giving thanks as far as all these challenges that I'm incurring. I'm experiencing. That's the point. But that is the point is that I've got the authority and the power. You've got the authority and power. So when junk comes up in our life, we can go ahead and rejoice. eradicate it right on the spot. By rejoicing. And, and so therefore we give thanks because we got the authority and the power. And okay. it's already done. Finished. Glory to God. Now, <clears throat> previously we explained that Adam, who's a man with flesh and blood, he disobeyed God and relinquished his God-given authority to Satan. To get this authority back, God's son was born Jesus. with flesh and blood without divine privileges. So Jesus was a man with flesh and blood just like each one of us. Yes, That's a key point. And if you recognize that and if you believe that, then that puts you in a position as far as being born again and becoming a citizen of the kingdom of God. And stop making excuses that Jesus is the only one that can do it. He did it so we can he, do it. He's already done it. Yeah, he, he's so done we his can. Part, right. Yeah. And uh, so through Jesus' crucifixion, death, and resurrection, he stripped Satan of all authority and power yes. that he received from Adam. So Adam had it before the fall. He turned it over to Satan because he disobeyed God. Yes. Now, we are all, we as born again, we are all back virtually to the same position before Adam's fall, except that Satan and the fallen angels continue to roam in the air, but without any of their own authority and power. They don't have any authority and power because it's, it's been stripped from them. Their mission, and we mentioned this many times, their mission is to create inroads into the lives of Christians through our words and actions, right. which comes from their suggestions. So they make the suggestions that comes into our thoughts and all. Thoughts, and, feelings, emotions, everything in the soulish realm. And, and what happens in most cases for people in the world is that what happens, unfortunately, is that when those thoughts come, come in, ungodly thoughts, we speak them. We speak relative to them. And what that does is that that activates demonic spirits who are listening to hear any of the ungodly words or phrases that we might say, just like God's angels are listening yep. to any of, God, of any of our godly words that we say because in, I think it's Hebrews 1.14, they're here, the ministering spirits are here to go ahead and to serve us and to go to work for us. But we have to, we have to be saying the right stuff. You can't say good and not necessarily good. You can't say God's kingdom words and the enemy's kingdom words. It'll negate itself. Right. Because they'll sit there and the, 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 they ain't, our angels won't, won't uh, act. So, the... The challenge that we have, and I'm referring to me for a long me time too. in the past, yep. the challenge that we have Had. is not mm -hmm. speaking God's word. But, not, which comes from not having the mind renewed to the word of God and God's right. kingdom. And, that, and that's why that we always go back to the point. The word of God. The key is spending time in the word, word of God. Now, once born again, as I mentioned, we have the same authority and power as Jesus and of Adam, but Adam, that was before the fall yeah. because when he disobeyed God, then uh, his, his saddle wasn't sent home, but he was kind of sent to, right. to, to be out there and, and to kind of fend for, to kind of toil and fend for his own. Yeah, now, live by the natural realm. Now, we've got, we've got a number of scriptures in closing here, and then we're going to kind of summarize. Here, here's uh, the first one. Matthew 28, 18. I want, you, I want you to listen to the progression 
that, that Lisa's going to read these. Okay, so this is the, from the Aramaic Bible in plain English, purposely. And Yeshua, Jesus, spoke with them, and he said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. In the manner in which my Father has sent me, I am sending you. You'll hear in one of the next scriptures that we're, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. Right. So what Jesus had when he was on the earth, we have. As, Through the Holy as, Spirit, right. right. Now, Roman, Romans 8, 16, and 17 from the New Living Translation. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. Oh. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share in his glory, we must also share in his persecutions. It says suffering, but the Lord told me to say persecutions. All right. Okay. Here's the next one. Romans 8, 8, 8 11. Now catch, catch this one. This is from um, NLT. <clears throat> the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. The, I want us to the catch same. it. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead resides in us. We, Reside, by faith, we have to take us. it. It's yeah. by faith. Resides in us, and when we're born again, that spirit just kind of hops in us, if you will. Yeah. And in, in our spirit, and it resides in us, and the more we lean on the spirit the more we'll live a godly life and with our authority and power we will have fewer Issues. obstacles and challenges in life because the holy spirit is guiding us and then number two we're using our authority and when they and power. Come, yeah and when they come up jesus faced situations all the time but we still give thanks we still listen to the holy spirit it, we don't get moved right and all things get thanks. yes okay philippians Next. 2 9 through 11, and this is from the New King James Version. Therefore, God has also has highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. One thing I learned over the last several years is that when I would experience challenges and all, is that if I didn't know what the Bible said about it, I would just say, in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> if I wanted it to part, I would say, I cast you out. Whatever it was, doubt, worry, fear, what, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. Sometimes now, I just dance around and praise God. Satan won't stay around praising God. No way. He'll, he'll run, he'll run and Scared. hightail it out. Mm -hmm. So. All right, here, here's the, uh, the director says she's over there. She gets she a said, broom and she sweeps gets him out. Sweeps him out. But mm -hmm. at the same time, she's using her mouth, demanding him, yep. casting him, commanding him out. Okay, here's the last scripture. Matthew 10, 1 from the New Living Translation. This is one I use a lot. Glory to God. Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. Every cast out. Just remember the cast out and heal. We have the power. We have the power to cast out every unclean spirit. So let's summarize with a therefore. 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 We control our future. We control. God <laughs> permits things, but it's because. We have allowed it. And he gives us free will. And he gives us free will, and we can handle it, reject it, or, or accept it, unfortunately. But we control our future when we exercise our authority and power by casting out unclean spirits in the name of Jesus. So I think the last point that I want to emphasize is that because I've heard, I've heard a number of people that they would question as far as that, do we control our future? Well, we control every day by that, letting the Holy Spirit through us. That's exactly what today's message is. That's why it's a title, We Control Our Future. So we tried to provide an outline here for you. Not tried, we did <laughs> provide an outline yes. here for you of the salient points in the Word salient, of God. Salient, nice. In the, in the Word of God that gives us the authority and the power 
to control our future. And to give you a, a practical example, we were in Hilton Head, and there was one report. I don't watch the news, but it can't, I saw it somewhere, and it talked about some hurricane coming. Immediately, the Lord had me stop, and he said, you take cast that out. You have authority over this jurisdiction of South Carolina, all the coast, because he told me to take authority. And where did that thing go? It's not here. And my friends in Florida, it's not there. And it, it, how is that be? Because we've taken authority and power. If things happen to you or hurricanes hit you, take authority. It, it shouldn't be doing that. It's destructive. Anything destructive is not from God. And right. he's given us power and authority. So use it, right? This is That's the it. outline to you and study it with the word of God.